This is the face of a man who broke the music industry, and you're about to find out how. Hi, I'm Adam. Welcome back to Music Mongoose. Louis Capaldi holds the record for the fastest ever unsigned artist to reach 25 million plays on Spotify. He's also the first artist in history to sell out an arena tour before their debut album was released. That is crazy. That's not how the music industry works. But Capaldi did it in style. Capaldi has been interested in music for pretty much his entire life. He started learning drums at two years of age, the guitar at nine, and was playing in pubs by the age of 11. He was kicking about in Scotland, playing pubs here and there for another seven years or so. And during this time, he was also uploading songs to SoundCloud, recorded simply on an iPhone. These tracks began to pick up pace online, and by the age of 18, he had caught the attention of Ryan Walter, who would become his manager. In fact, the day after first contacting Lewis, Ryan flew from the USA to Glasgow to see him play live. That is some instinct right there. On October 7th, 2016, the day of his 20th birthday, Lewis Capaldi wrote what would be his debut release, Bruises. It was about a relationship of his that had just ended. Five months later, in March 2017, as buzz about Capaldi continued to skyrocket on SoundCloud and YouTube, Bruises was independently released. It went on to amass 28 million plays on Spotify in the space of just a few weeks. Pretty f***ing good if you ask me. A record deal shortly followed that, and he went on tour with the likes of Rag and Bone Man, Jake Bug, Ellie Golding, Niall Horan, who he'd forged an adorable relationship with, by the way, and even Ed Sheeran. He later released his first EP, Bloom, which performed exceptionally well, and then sold out an entire arena tour before the release of his debut album. The first artist to ever do so. And it sold out in a single second. But how? Well, for starters, he is the master of social media. And by that, I mean the guy is f***ing hilarious. I've done one, I've done, I've used the toilet last night. Okay, have you, sue me, I've used the toilet. And I've had the f***ing rid it. It's fl it won't flush, it's stuck. It's stuck there, and I'm like, right, where's the f***ing toilet brush? There's no f***ing toilet brush. But it's much more than just being funny. Capaldi knows his audience. He knows how they consume social media, and he plays to that, to perfection. He's relatable, choosing to broadcast the embarrassing moments of his life that other artists would probably shy away from. He's broken out of that music industry mold of turning the artist into a product of marketing. Instead, there's something endearingly human about him. And incredibly, he convinced label bods to think the same way. I mean, just look at this poster in the London Underground. You wouldn't see Adele doing that. He also knows how to be the subject of talkability. He doesn't shy away from controversy. In fact, his strategy is to embrace and even fuel it. Take this interview with Noel Gallagher. Who's well, this Capaldi fella? Lewis Capaldi. The f is that idiot? He is. In response, Capaldi did this. <laughs> He's the master of the water cooler moment. He knows what gets people talking and he uses his platform to nurture that. Under the surface, it's an incredibly sophisticated marketing strategy that most labels and PR firms would opt to avoid. So, social media certainly contributed to his skyrocket to stardom. The other thing was this. Someone You Loved. Part of his second EP, Breach. The single was released in November 2018 and absolutely took over. It spent seven weeks at the top of the UK chart. It would later top the Billboard 100 in the States and at the time of recording, is the fourth most streamed song on Spotify ever at 2.6 billion streams. That is what had people flocking to a Lewis Capaldi show, selling out an entire arena tour in one second. Again, before his first album was even released. The music industry should be livid with his rise to success. And while this rise may be a bit of a fluke, it does prove that with passion, hard work, a deep understanding of your audience, and not to mention having an incredible voice, obviously, anyone could make it. A good 45 years earlier, the Rolling Stones wrote and recorded the worst song of all time. No, seriously. Click the video on screen for that one, and let me know which story from the music world you'd like to see next, and I'll catch you next time on Music Mongoose.